Andrew Tate rips into Muslims who are hypocrites re the UK riots. Now, I know a lot of you guys don't like him, but there is still a large chunk of the Muslim youth that look up to Andrew Tate. And whatever I've been trying to say on my channel, but unfortunately, some people have misunderstood. Andrew Tate, I feel, is saying the same thing or a very similar thing. So I'm hoping that the people that I was unable to get through to, hopefully Andrew Tate can get through too. So please do listen to this. A lot of Muslims are trying to give me a hard time online as if they are perfect people. I'm sure they're not watching porn and drinking alcohol and they're perfect examples of Islam, these people. I reverted to Islam because I felt God and also some very good friends of mine gave me some amazing advice and I'm on a journey like everybody else to learn. And God knows the truth of my heart and God knows how hard I'm trying. I'm not gonna allow some people who are imperfect themselves on, with Twitter accounts to try and come along and tell me how to be a Muslim. That's the first thing, I'm uninterested in you people. God will deal with you like he will deal with me. That's the first thing. Second thing. This is very interesting because this is exactly what some of the Muslims who are bad apples have done to me. I was on a religious journey and I was sharing my journey online, but I was getting threats. I was told not to talk about stuff. And unfortunately, where I was praying two times a day and I was working towards what, praying five times a day, these people really, really put me off the religion where I didn't pray then for two months because I was like, do you know what? I can't be part of this kind of stuff. Unfortunately and sadly, this is exactly what these people have been doing to Andrew Tate and all converts, all other converts, or most converts, I would say, from my understanding. Because if you're a convert and you're a lady, you are harassed into wearing hijab. Why are you not wearing hijab? And unfortunately and sadly, had Andrew Tate been a female, he would have been harassed into wearing a hijab. And what people need to understand is the bad apples, the bad Muslims, is you're putting people off the religion. Everyone is on their own journey. Just focus on yourself, please. I don't see why it's anti-Islamic to believe that a country should have borders. I believe that if you're going to go to any country in the world, including the UK, you should turn up at the airport with a passport and you should complete the visa check and you should be a law-abiding citizen. I don't think there's anything wrong with saying that people arriving on boats, unchecked migration, irregardless of whether they're from the Islamic world or the African third world Christian nations like Rwanda. There's a lot of people who are Christian who are arriving on these boats. I think the whole thing is disgusting and I think it undermines the sovereignty of a nation state. Dubai, the United Arab Emirates, has some of the strictest immigration in the world. Would you be allowed to just turn up there without a passport and get free housing, and get put in a hotel for free, and then run around and break the law? Do you think you'd be able to get away with that in Dubai? Also, in regards to this riots, it's kind of interesting because I have some people saying I'm on the Islamic side of it and I'm the reason why the Muslims are picking up arms and fighting against the British. And some people are saying I'm far right extremists and I'm the reason why the British are kicking off. I guess I'm in a difficult position because I was raised in England and I'm half white, half black, Islamic revert who doesn't live in England anymore. So I guess they're just trying to pin me somewhere. And I just want to make it very clear my point of view. My point of view is that when you have men who feel like they're going to lose their lands, they eventually become enraged. And if you don't give them any kind of outlet, and typically an outlet would be allowing them to have a voice, a fair voice, which allows people to understand and respect their concerns. That doesn't happen in the West. You're not allowed to say that you're upset or you're concerned about anything. You are instantly labeled and shut down and shut up. And if you take something and pressurize it, eventually if you overpressurize it, it explodes. And this was my point. I could see this happening for the last couple of years, I would say. And it's only the last couple of months that I've really kind of started making videos on this. And because I could sense this happening, because I actually bothered to and try to look into other people's point of view, I could see and that people, the native white British people were increasingly getting annoyed, increasingly getting fed up. They're getting scared of the situation. They feel like they can't speak. This is the reason, guys, I've been trying to warn, the, especially the Muslims, the last couple of months. That I, I, I look back at all the videos that I've made. I, I made a video um, specifically saying civil war brewing. Okay. And I made videos about will Muslims take over the UK? Because it's not that I was trying to stir the pot. I was trying to address the concerns of wh white native British people who I felt are getting quite scared. Unfortunately, a lot of the Muslims, because they're right in their little bubbles, they don't they didn't know or care about the fears of the native white British people and other people in the world. Because you guys, the bad apples are in your little well, some of you guys are bad apples and some of you guys are just not bad apples, but you're ignorant. You're just in your little bubble. Most people could see this is going to happen. Most people who have actually integrated within society in the West could see that this is going to happen. The pressure cooker is going to pop. And, and you know, all the videos I was making was coming from a good place, trying to unite people. Unfortunately, when someone tries to help some of these ignorant Muslims, they misunderstand.
you guys need to if you're not listening to my voice listen listen to andrew kate's voice and other voices like ours although we're different people we're and we're saying it in a different way we're saying the same thing guys i don't th think that the problem is muslims i think the problem is the government refusing to listen to men who are worried about losing their lands refusing to listen to men who are worried about losing the land that their ancestors died for and if you look at any geographical area on the planet when men face losing their lands eventually there's going to be some form of violence as they resist that it's inside of every single man's dna to fight for the land that he believes is his we talk about this with gaza israel right now so i think it's kind of hypocritical to talk about how the gazans have been repressed and the land is being taken from them by insane globalists and then sit there and say well the british shouldn't complain that insane globalists are importing millions and millions of military age males who intend on taking the land from them Please understand, guys, I'm half black, half white, but the average white man isn't, doesn't feel safe to put his daughter out in the street anymore in the country he pays taxes in. And he's paying taxes to pay for a hotel room for some random Muslim or Christian, some random Islam, Islamic Bangladeshi or Christian Rwandan to live for free while he works his ass off. You tell me these kind of people are not going to be mad? The Islamic world wouldn't allow this. Dubai wouldn't allow this either. This is not about Islam and this is not about England being a racist country. What this is actually about is a tier of bullshit elites, globalists, and they love the idea of getting the poor people to fight against each other. Guys, I'm from the streets. I'm from a Luton council estate. I was raised... I on a Luton council estate as well. And I've brought this up in the past. And look, this is exactly what I've been trying to say in my videos, all the points that Andrew Kate is making. I think that the illegal immigration is the real issue in this country, regardless of the religion of the, of the person, because a lot of the um, asylum seekers are also from Rwanda, countries like Rwanda, which are actually Christian countries. I think, unfortunately, what's happening is lots of different people are mixing different, different things. And a lot of people have made this about religion. There are lots of good Muslims as well. So unfortunately, the quality of people coming into this country, whether they are Muslim or Christian, is not the quality that we want. Ugh. And Luton's a very Islamic town, and I grew up at the bottom of the socioeconomic ladder. I'm now at the highest possible echelon. And let me tell you guys something. As someone who's gone from a council estate to a billionaire, let me promise you this. When a black billionaire meets a white billionaire, there's no racism. They're billionaires. Racism's for the poor people, and the elites love it. The elites love making the white poor man fight the Islamic poor man. They want you two poor people fighting so they can stay in charge. The problem, my message to the British patriots, is the problem are not the Muslims you live amongst. You have more in common with the men you live amongst than you do the people who are making these insane policies. And my same thing I'll say to the Muslims. The problem is not the average British man you live amongst. The problem are insane globalists who refuse to allow anyone a point of view, who refuse to do anything which is good for the the actual population of the country. And and I actually would argue that if the British patriots were to go up to the average Muslim men that they have a problem with and say, do you think people should be allowed to arrive here without passports and just turn up and run around and break the law and live for free, they'd probably agree with them. The British political class has been infiltrated by globalists who are intent on destroying the country. Those are the true enemies of the average British citizen. And I hope that people realize that before it's too late, because it's very easy to turn on the people around you because they're a different color, but the people around you are quite often in the same position you are. And I think that all it would take is giving the average British man a, a voice, allowing him to have a point of view which is respected, enforcing a border, which every country should have anyway, and understanding that these insane policies that the British public are being forced to swallow, the Emiratis would never swallow in the UAE. So this is not even an Islamic issue. Stop confusing and conflating it with racism, with Islam, with all these things, and just make it very clear. The British people want to have a state with a border. They want to have a voice in the country that they pay taxes to, and they don't want to be sold out by a bullshit political class. And if you do those things and give these people the basic rights they deserve as full-grown men, you'll probably Right, I hate it when the adverts pop up. Will violence end near instantly? Yeah, that was the end of the video anyway. Interesting. Right, guys. I'm so glad Andrew Tate made all of these points and there were lots of interesting points. I, I'm very happy that he raised the double standards in relation to how a lot of Muslims are treating Gaza. And this is what people need to understand. A lot of Muslims, unfortunately, are in a bubble whether they're bad Muslims, good Muslims, or ignorant Muslims in the middle, 
a lot of these Muslims are in a bubble because some of these Muslims don't integrate with other people, so they're not even aware of what other people are thinking, unfortunately. And I would say we have more in common. Everyone, regardless of race and religion, probably has more in common, especially if you're a British citizen. Why would you want a border that is weak? None of us want this, right, regardless of race and religion. And the other thing is, um, and very important to mention, is no one is supporting any kind of religious place or mosques being attacked. Now, what I would like the Muslims to understand is, yes, of course, of course, there are people who are looting, taking the opportunity to loot and vandalize, and there will be racists and there will be Islamophobes mixed within the people who are patriots. But please try to distinguish those people from the patriots, because if you're not going to be doing that, then you need to understand that a lot of people who are on the other side, although I feel we're on the, all really on the same side, all the good apples, people on the other side, the patriots, when they look at us, they are also, some of them are mixing the bad apples with the good apples. When they see grooming gangs, when they see uh, uh, people doing fraud, when they see the bad apples within the Muslim society doing bad things, some of them are also assuming all of us are like this, right? Um, some of us are, some of them are thinking we're all extremists and this is the issue we've got a big chunk of people that if they actually bother to speak to each other the patriots and the good muslims and and the ignorant muslims you we would realize we all have much in common but unfortunately the extreme the bad apples in the muslim side and the bad apples in the native british side as well who are who, who are using this opportunity to loot and vandalize and and be racist or whatever they want to do those people are muddying the waters um, and this is important to distinguish between the two. Like I said before, I could see this coming. This is the reason for my videos. Do look back at the videos that I've been making. I, I was trying to make those videos in good faith. For anyone who's bothered to integrate, they could see this is bubbling. Now, I definitely feel that the, the common um, working class native white British person has not been heard for a very, very long time. And you need to understand if you're an ethnic minority, is that you are expected to integrate into UK. Stop trying to change UK to make your life cushy and easy. I have seen instances where a lot of ignorant Muslims or bad Muslims, I'm, I may use the term interchangeably, although I feel there are different, these are different categories of Muslims, because like I said before, there is a spectrum of people. They don't understand. I've seen it behaviors like blocking the road. If it's Muharram, you know, which is a religious time for Shias, if you please stop blocking UK roads. This is not a Muslim country, right? This, if you're going to do stuff like that, it's going to make us all look bad. And if there's something happening in Bangladesh, please don't fight over here in UK. Um, if if there's an argument between Pakistan and Afghanistan, please Pakistani people and Afghanistani people, please stop fighting on UK streets. You guys are bringing issues into this country that are not the problem of native white British people. But if you're going to make it the problem, naturally they're going to get annoyed. They have been extremely accommodating. No one has an issue if you're a Muslim, Hindu, Sikh, or atheist. No one has an issue. Whatever, you, please just stop shoving your religion. For those of you guys who are, stop, stop shoving your religion down their throats. That's what is annoying them. If whatever you do in your house or personally, in terms of your culture and religion, no one cares. Everyone is very, very accommodating. Native white British people have been extremely accommodating. But what you guys are doing is you're putting too much pressure on them expecting them to keep adapting to you guys is not the way it works when you go to a country you need to adapt okay this is a pressure cooker situation where they're fed up please okay yes there will be some racists and some islamophobes please understand it's not all of them the majority of them are patriotic people they want their country back please 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 try to empathize with them okay i completely condemn any kind of vandalism and looting and um attacking mosques and all this kind of stuff but and i know that in these kind of situations, the emotions are high and you can automatically sometimes as assume that everyone's like this. It's not everyone, okay? So please just bear this in mind. I, I am concerned about what's happening in the UK and this video is made in good faith with a good intent. I hope some of, I hope you guys don't misunderstand it. Unfortunately, there will be people or Muslims sitting in other side of the world. And I would say non-Muslims as well, sitting on the other side of the world who will deliberately try to stir things up, okay? And try to stir the pot. But please, 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 to the Muslims out there who are in the ignorant ca category, are you guys are not bad apples, but you guys are just ignorant and you're not thinking of other people. Please, please just wake up and try to understand the bigger picture. We, we are all actually on the same side, regardless, regardless of race and religion. Thank you.